this says key number two because I just moved some things around last night. Key number one of the treasure principle keys is uh, recognizing God as the owner, and we'd already dealt w with that in the other part. But my heart always goes where I put God's money. So now we're going to go back to that verse about where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. This is not what many people, this does not say what many people think it says. Many people, without realizing it, they think it says, where your heart is, there your treasure will be. And doesn't that make sense? Well, if my heart's with something, then I'll put my treasure there. That's not what it says. It says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Now that's interesting. And think about how true it is. Let's say... Uh, I buy up shares in Microsoft, or I buy up shares in Apple, or I buy up shares in Ford Motor, Comp uh, General Motors, General Motors. Okay, yesterday I might not have cared a bit. About, I didn't even check the financial page to see what the stock was selling at. If there was an article yesterday on Microsoft, I didn't care. All I care is that their software and their computer works for me, that I buy. I, I don't care about how the company is doing. But when I buy up shares, when my money goes there, all of a sudden I have vested interests in the company, right? Now I care. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My heart follows my treasure. I put money over there. Now I care. I paid for this labor to be done, and because I paid for it, because my money is there, I have vested interest in the outcome, and I want to make sure that the job is done. I want to make sure I get the product. I want to make sure I get the actual thing I paid for. My heart, I have now vested interest in that thing over there. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It also carries over to giving, which is his central meaning. If I, uh, I, I've actually had people say to me before, man, I wish I had a heart for world missions. I really wish I do. And I go, I've got good news for you. It, Jesus told us exactly how to have a heart for world missions or anything else. Just start getting large amounts of your money there. And you will have vested interest in world missions. By definition, it means you will care about world missions. If you give thousands of dollars for church planting in India, and um, an earthquake hits in India, and you find out it's in that part of India where you have sponsored church planting, you're going to drop to your knees and pray for those people. You have vested interest in them because you've given to them. If there's some tribal group that you have sponsored through the seed company, a translation again in their language, our, our ministry has supported um, the entire translation work for whole languages. Um, maybe cost, I think one of them cost maybe $180,000, another maybe cost 200,000, but what start to finish, the Bible has been translated into these languages, we were able to give to them. Well, I'll tell you what, when I get that thing in the mail that tells me how that group of people is doing and the progress on that Bible translation, I read it, I pay attention to it, I thank God for it, I pray for those people, I see pictures, and they're not just pictures. These are real people. I've got vested interests in them. So where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Not only is your treasure where you put the money, but your treasure is in the form of the heavenly treasures that will be yours as a result of taking earthly treasures and putting them there. So that now my heart is more in heaven. My heart is more thinking of that day when we will sit at those banquet tables, not just one banquet, not just the wedding feast, but where we will celebrate together and we will eat and drink to the glory of God. And my heart is more in heaven and the things of heaven and less you know, in this world. So this is not a value judgment, it's a simple fact. This is not like, I'm, I'm being critical of you because I'm telling you that if you, uh, 
build or buy a huge, gorgeous, expensive house, that your heart's going to be in that house like I'm thinking you're doing a bad thing. No, if you buy a, a little house, your heart will be in that house. But I'm just saying, wherever the money goes, and the more of it that goes there, obviously, the more it takes your heart there. So there's a whole lot of us who are spending all our money on all kinds of things where our heart is naturally going where our treasure is. If you want to care more about God's kingdom and have more vested interest in God's kingdom and have more vested interest in heaven and the work of God, the things of God, the people of God, you want to have more of a heart for the needy, give more to the needy. That's just the way it is. The law of vested interest, whatever we invest in, whatever we give to, we care about. Where we put money shows where our heart is, but it also determines where our heart goes. And I think, I, I, I tell people sometimes, uh, oh, you know, I just don't, I'm really not into my church. I don't know. I, I just... Uh, we, we've been going off and on for a couple of years and never really gotten involved. Just really don't have a heart for it. How much are you giving? I mean, are you giving substantially to your church? Nah, just have never gotten into it. Okay, well, why don't you give substantially to it and just see how, well, this is a church I give to. You know, I put my treasure there and my heart's going to follow there. So I'll have more of a heart for my church as I give to it. The good news is the choice is yours. You can put your heart you know, wherever you want to. The same thing is true with time. Um, you know, one day, um, uh, one of our, our number one uh, singles player, I coach singles, um, tennis, uh, we had played every week, virtually every week, and three times a week often, uh, f since he was a freshman. And I had always won, but the matches were getting closer and closer and closer, the better he got, because I pretty much was staying where I was. And he was going like that. So one day, senior year, he beats me. I never beat him again after that. But one day he beats me his senior year, and I find myself at the net, and I tried my best to win. But we're at the net, and we're both jumping up and down, and we're hugging each other. And his joy was my joy. And I thought about this, how people often say sports brings out the worst in you. And it can. Sports can definitely bring out the worst. But it has to be in you in the first place. But, but I thought, why am I so happy? I've never been so happy to lose in my life. <laughs> well, I was happy at... At his winning but the thing was I go why because I have invested years in teaching that guy tennis I have vested interest in the success of this young man his success was my success his winning was in my best interest even though I lost how does that work because where your treasure is where your treasure of time in that case an interest in somebody, there your heart is. My heart was with him. I had cheered for him to win in all of those matches he had played, and now I was rejoicing that he had won against me. Don't wait to take action until your heart's in it. Take action so your heart will be in it. Don't let your giving follow your heart. Give so your heart will follow your giving. 